administration wants to deploy up to 4,000 National Guard troops on the Mexican border to assist Border Patrol operations. But National Guard troops are ordinarily under the control of state governors, and some of them don't like it. Oregon Governor Kate Brown says if the president asks for her Guard troops, she will refuse. Montana Governor Stephen Bullock said the same. In normal circumstances, the first duty of the military is national defense, and that begins with securing a country's frontiers. But in the U.S., that duty has been sacrificed on the altar of political gain. Martin O'Malley is the former Democratic governor of the state of Maryland. We just spoke to him. Hey, Governor, thanks for joining us. Thank um, you, Tucker. It's so a question about, about precedent. Um, in, in 2010, President Obama uh, authorized Operation Phalanx, which sent National Guardsmen and local units uh, to the southwest border. President Bush did the same thing in 2006. And as I remember at the time, governors, Republican and Democrat, thanked them for the help. Why is this different? Well, this is uh, different for uh, a couple of reasons, and in a way, it's not different. I mean, honestly, what I think President Obama learned by the deployment of National Guard troops in that re-election year 2010 was that it wasn't very effective, it was very expensive, and he probably could have accomplished the same ends by, by other means, so he did not do it again. I think the question to ask in this deployment is, is this really addressing an American security need, or is it political theater? Uh, and there are always, whether President Bush or President Obama or now President Trump, any use of federal troops, even National Guard troops within the continental United States, uh, has to uh, pass certain tests that we have put into uh, national law that prohibits the use of federal troops for law enforcement purposes. So, so I mean, I, I, understand, rather, uh, I just want to make sure I understand this. So you're saying that Democratic governors in Oregon, for example, in Montana, have done a cost analysis of this, and they're just against wasting federal money. They just, they, part of them dies when they see federal dollars going to waste. Is that, that's the objection? Oh, I, I have no idea. I mean, I, I haven't, I'm not sure which governors are saying this is a good idea and, and which is not. All I know is that when it was done under President Obama in 2010, in hindsight, I think most everybody agreed it was a wasteful use of dollars and it was not necessary. Now, uh, there probably will be some governors who might find that uh, they are very supportive in, you know, the incumbent governor of Arizona or someplace in using their own National Guard there within their state to support federal, you know, protection of, of the border. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I, what I'm saying is that when it was done in the past, it was found to be ineffective, wasteful, and, and many people observed that it was a step or two too close to violating uh, the principles of the Posse Comitatus Act, which says that we should never allow federal troops, unless we can, if we can avoid it, to be used for law enforcement purposes. Right, but there have been plenty of, plenty of cases. Like I mean, from Little Rock in 1957 to the University of Mississippi, I think in 61. I mean, I'll let Washington, D.C. in 68, April, uh, 50 years ago this month, right. federal troops were used because, you know, there was a law enforcement crisis. I think you could Hur the case Hurricane here. Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina. So Katrina. I was there for that. After exactly. the collapse of civilian things. Yeah, it's right. there. It's... Uh, you know, I, was, I served as the co-chair of the Council of Governors, and in that, that was created by an act of, of Congress to meet quarterly with the Secretary of Defense and Secretary of Homeland Security to work out these issues. Each of those examples you give, Tucker, are, are, are indeed, you know, important historic precedents, uh, all of which have to do with making sure that we don't use federal troops for law enforcement purposes within the United States, a long-standing principle from this republic's founding. Right, but this wouldn't be, of course, George this Washington would be cared deeply about. our, right, but that's, I mean, none of that is real, as you know. This has to do with support that the Democratic Party now has affirmatively for illegal immigration. They don't want any steps taken, meaningful ones, to stop it. They don't acknowledge it's a problem. These are new positions for the Democratic Party. Bill Clinton did not hold these views. Hillary Clinton didn't hold these views two years ago. But if you're honest, you've got to acknowledge Actually, that the views of the party have changed. I th and you've forgotten that litany to mention that President Obama probably deported and interned yeah. more immigrants than any president ahead That's true. of him. So exactly. I don't accept your... 
I don't accept your premise with with respect. I don't accept your premise that the Democratic Party is in favor of illegal immigration, flooding the country with drugs, or bringing in rapists or murderers. No, no, no. no but actually, that's not. That's not. I don't think they're for flooding the country with drugs or rapists or anything like that. You're overstating it. I do think they're opposed to any meaningful attempt to stopping the inflow of illegal immigration into America. And I think it's actually very hard for Democrats really. right now to concede that 11 million illegals in your country is a problem. Do you think it's a problem? Uh, I don't believe that the level of immigration, uh, even some total, is much greater than it's been at other times in our nation's history. And in fact, but that's border crossing in Mexico, as you know, Tucker, border crossings in Mexico are at about a 46-year low. That's untrue. That's untrue. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you unveiled the fake statistic of the wrong form. No. Actually, apprehensions of illegal immigrants are up three times this month over this month last year. So, in fact, they're up. Yes, but, but overall, but, boarding crossings are down. I'm, I'm talking about the apprehension of illegal aliens into this country. But hey, my I'm question is, let's is declare really victory. Simple let's one. give Donald Trump victory. Let's but tell Donald Trump but, but everything for me, it's he's not done about to make Trump. America. No, but see, that's a distraction. An unwelcoming Trump is a distraction. place for immigrants has worked. Border crossings is, are at a 46-year low. Okay, the question I'm is, sorry, repeat we the have question. 11 million illegal aliens, at least in this country, right now. Right. Do you think that's, that's right. bad? We need to do something about it. Right. Uh, do you I think, think when you say something, bad. anything short of giving them citizenship and voting rights, like sending them home, would that be acceptable to you? Well, I think some of them probably should be home, but the, sent so-called home, but the vast majority of them uh, probably should not be. They should be given a pathway to citizenship, and we should engage in comprehensive immigration reform, as we have in other periods in our what, nation's history. What percentage? History and realize 11 million is a lot of people. What percentage do you think ought to be given citizenship? Look, I think it's certainly anybody that's a, uh, a serious threat to, to public safety. I mean, I, I think that they should be uh, returned and, and deported. And in fact, that's what we have been doing as a country for some time. But I think the vast majority of those 11 million people, Tucker, are, are, you know, we're, we're not going to be uh, transporting or deporting them home. I mean, oh. maybe so some made my, will just made my case leave and me. maybe some will go home. Right. Maybe some will go. What aspect of your case? I'm glad to my, be helpful. My, my case that, that previous Democratic presidents, including Bill Clinton, said it is a prima facie problem to have 11 million people here illegally. We should I agree. stop the inflow and we should make them leave because we didn't admit them in the first place. And that used to be the position uh, of the Democratic sure. Party. I'm not sure that the make them all leave thing is, uh, is something that you can say is a, a realistic policy, uh, would be cost effective, or would ultimately be good for our nation, especially okay. if many of those people are kids that have only known the United States right. no, as no, the only I, country you, in look, that's all, I'm not attacking you. I'm just saying you're making my point that the position has changed of the party, and I just like a reality check once in a while to acknowledge that. Governor, thank you for yeah. joining us. I appreciate thank it. you, Tucker. Land of the free, home of the brave. Dan Bongino is NRA TV contributor and a former Secret Service agent. He joins us tonight. So, Dan, this story I think is interesting for a bunch of reasons. One, it suggests that the country is breaking apart in some meaningful way because governors and officials on the West Coast are refusing to acknowledge federal authority. That's a big deal. But the deeper question arises, what's the purpose of having law enforcement or armed forces if not to protect your own country? Yeah, there isn't. And, uh, you know, there were some interesting uh, sound bites in that interview with Governor O'Malley there. Did you notice, Tucker, when you asked him about the 2010 deployment of the National Guard by right. Barack Obama, he never really answered the question. No. And Tucker, that was entirely uncontroversial at the time. I Republican governors understood that due to the threat of narco trafficking and the fact that terrorists do in fact know we have a very porous southern border, that this is unquestionably a national security issue, if not a top two or three national security issue. This is a pure political play by these governors, Tucker. They are pandering to an increasingly radical leftist base that's lost their mind on immigration. It is no more difficult than that to understand. But if you've got 60,000 Americans or more dying every year of drug ODs, a lot of them from fentanyl, much of which comes over the Mexican border, I mean, yeah. at minimum, tens of thousands of American citizens dying from this. This isn't marijuana. It's the most powerful synthetic opiate ever devised, and it's killing like an entire demographic. So, like, why is that not an emergency? I, I'm honestly confused. No, I'm, 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 I'm ecstatic you brought this up because this is a common uh, trick the liberals pull on us. 
They talk about illegal immigration as, this, as if it's a victimless crime, Tucker. And they also talk about it. Notice there how they talk about it almost exclusively in terms of the effect on the person who broke the law. Oh, what are we going to do? They're here. Oh, my gosh. They were looking for work. Okay, I get it. Point stipulated. Many of them are looking for work. Some yes. of them aren't. Some of them are here to traffic in sex trafficking, in drugs, to traffic in weapons. As I said, terrorists are well aware of the poorest border. This is not a victimless crime, not to mention, Tucker, what about the American people? What about the taxpayers who have to fund this? We're 20 trillion in debt and we're funding uh, you know, social programs that are benefiting people that basically came into the country and said, ah, laws, schmalaws, I'm, I'm but, not but, interested, I'll do my own thing. But why is it the same people who are telling us it's immoral to defend our own borders, and this is a left and right thing, this is Lindsey yeah. Graham and a lot of Democrats are telling us yes. you're not allowed to defend your own borders, but you must send your sons to defend the borders of Syria. Why are the same people who are against stopping illegal immigration for more wars abroad? It's an interesting mix, isn't it? it it is. It's actually a very dangerous mix because what you get is, and listen, I'm a free market libertarian, but I'm a free market libertarian for a set of common rules we all live by. You know, I, I, I always think of this story, this Ecuadorian painter who came here legally, he was painting my house in Maryland. He was the most anti-illegal immigration guy well, I ever met. You know sure. why? He, he, was be put, he was being put out of business by illegal immigrants who were coming into, the, right. into Maryland, into that market, and undercutting his cost. He's like, why did I bother following the rules? I could have just done it illegally and got the same darn thing. Right. And, of course, the cost to people like that is really high because this whole mess, our unwillingness to restrain immigration in any way or be sensible about it, discredits immigrants, many of whom are like great people and really do add to the country. So how do you think they feel about this? The people who stood in line to get here because they really believed in America. My wife is one of them. It was a long process, Tucker. Yeah. It took a long time. It took us a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of effort to do it the right way. So people should have some respect and understand that waiting in line matters, and that flag should mean something to them. And by Amen. disrespecting it, you've shown us it means nothing. That's absolutely right. I'm just stopping by to remind you that liberals are insane! <laughs> Social justice warriors are becoming more violent and triggered than ever before! Anyways, be sure to subscribe to KGP TV on YouTube and have a blessed day. Yeah, man. Stop it. They don't acknowledge it's a problem. These are new positions for the Democratic Party. Bill Clinton did not hold these views. Hillary Clinton didn't hold these views two years ago. But if you're honest, you've got to acknowledge Actually, that the views of the party have changed. I th and you've forgotten that litany to mention that President Obama probably deported and interned yeah. more immigrants than any president ahead That's of true. him. So exactly. I don't accept your... I don't accept your premise, with, with respect, I don't accept your premise that the Democratic Party is in favor of illegal immigration, flooding the country with drugs, or bringing in rapists or murderers. No, 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 but actually Democratic that's not, that's not I don't think they're for are. flooding the country with drugs or rapists or anything like that. You're overstating it. I do think they're opposed to any meaningful attempt to stopping the inflow of illegal immigration into America. And I think it's actually very hard for Democrats right now to concede that 11 million illegals in your country is a problem. Do you think it's a problem? Uh, I don't believe that the level of immigration, uh, even some total, is much greater than it's been at other times in our nation's history. And in fact, uh, have done a cost analysis of this, and they're just against wasting federal money. They just, they, part of them dies when they see federal dollars going to waste. Is that, that's the objection? Oh, I, I have no idea. I mean, I, I haven't, I'm not sure which governors are saying this is a good idea and, and which is not. All I know is that when it was done under President Obama in 2010, in hindsight, I think most everybody agreed it was a wasteful use of dollars and it was not necessary. Now, uh, there probably will be some governors who might find that uh, they are very supportive in, you know, the incumbent governor of Arizona or someplace in using their own National Guard there within their state to support federal 
you know, protection of, of the border. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I, what I'm saying is that when it was done in the past, it was found to be ineffective, wasteful, and, and many people observed that it was a step or two too close to violating uh, the principles of the Posse Comitatus Act, which says that we should never allow federal troops, unless we can, if we can avoid it, to be used for law enforcement purposes. The administration wants to deploy up to 4,000 National Guard troops on the Mexican border to assist Border Patrol operations. But National Guard troops are ordinarily under the control of state governors, and some of them don't like it. Oregon Governor Kate Brown says if the president asks for her Guard troops, she will refuse. Montana Governor Stephen Bullock said the same. In normal circumstances, the first duty of the military is national defense, and that begins with securing a country's frontiers. But in the U.S., that duty has been sacrificed on the altar of political gain. Martin O'Malley is the former Democratic governor of the state of Maryland. We just spoke to him. Hey, Governor, thanks for joining us. Um, Thank you, Tucker. It's so a question about, about precedent. Um, in, in 2010, President Obama uh, authorized Operation Phalanx, which sent National Guardsmen and local units uh, to the southwest border. President Bush did the same thing in 2006. And as I remember at the time, governors, Republican and Democrat, thanked them for the help. Why is this different? Well, this is uh, different for uh, a couple right. of Right, but there have been plenty of, plenty of cases. Like I mean, from Little Rock in 1957 to the University of Mississippi, I think in 61. I've been mean, at Washington, D.C. in 68, April, uh, 50 years ago this month. Right. Federal troops were used because, you know, there was a law enforcement crisis. I think you could Hur make the case Hurricane here. Katrina. Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina. So Katrina. I was there for that. After exactly. the collapse of civilian things. Yeah, it's right. there. It's. Uh, you know, I, was, I served as the co-chair of the Council of Governors, and in that, that was created by an act of, of Congress to meet quarterly with the Secretary of Defense and Secretary of Homeland Security to work out these issues. Each of those examples you give, Tucker, are, are, are indeed, you know, important historic precedents, uh, all of which have to do with making sure that we don't use federal troops for law enforcement purposes within the United States, a long-standing principle from this republic's founding. Right, but this wouldn't be, of course, George this Washington would be cared deeply about. Our, right, but that's, I mean, none of that is real, as you know. This has to do with support that the Democratic Party now has affirmatively for illegal immigration. They don't want any steps taken, meaningful ones. A couple of reasons, and in a way, it's not different. I mean, honestly, what I think President Obama learned by the deployment of National Guard troops in that re-election year 2010 was that it wasn't very effective. It was very expensive, and he probably could have accomplished the same ends by, by other means, so he did not do it again. I think the question to ask in this deployment is, is this really addressing an American security need, or is it political theater? Uh, and they're always, whether President Bush or President Obama or now President Trump, any use of federal troops, even National Guard troops, within the continental United States uh, has to uh, pass certain tests that we have put into uh, national law that prohibits the use of federal troops for law enforcement purposes. So, so I mean, I, I, understand, rather, uh, I just want to make sure I understand this. So you're saying that Democratic governors in Oregon, for example, and Montana,